Well, good morning. You have completed lesson three, and you are now ready to move on to uh, a couple other assignments so we can finish up the module. The first thing is the lab. So you've done lab one, lab magpie activity one. Today, one of the things you're going to work on is lab magpie activity two. And you can see in the starter guide, the student guide, in activity two, Scroll my screen better. There we go. Here's activity one. In activity two, you're essentially running the Magpie code. You need to have both Magpie and Magpie Runner open inside Dr. Java. And the program that you're going to run is Magpie Runner. That's the one you're going to compile and run. You're going to compile actually both of them, but the one you're going to run is Bagpie Runner. Once you run that, the program should open up and start. And then you can just go through and follow the directions of the exercise. When you're done, submit your responses in the written response and submit your code as a upload as a .java file so I can see your results. Make sure you answer all the questions. Do not move on to Activity 3. You are just doing Activity 2 and you should have already done activity one. In terms of the lesson, if you've completed lesson three, round off error, and submitted the exit ticket, you should now see a quiz practice, a quiz review, a summative assignment module, a change machine, and you should see a note about the summative quiz. You can't actually see the quiz. I have it hidden until you make your appointment to come see me face to face. It is a summative quiz, so it does require that you see me face to face to take the assessment. For the summative change machine project, uh, you're essentially making change. You're going to enter the cost of the item, and the change is going to be in just quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So you don't have to worry about dollar differences. It just should be quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. Think about our one of our activities where we uh, changed. Uh, money by getting place value. Actually, it wasn't money, but getting the place value of different numbers. Think about your round off error here. That's very important that you pay attention to that round off error. That should not exist when you're doing your change owed. So when you're doing your calculations, all of those things must be taken into account, and your results should look like this. As an extension, if you choose, you can make it work with dollars. So for example, if somebody had a $7.25 is paid for a $4.24 bill, you get a change result will be 3.01 dollars are included this time and we can see it's zero quarters, zero dimes, zero nickels and one penny. <clears throat> so uh, make sure you pay attention to the correct formatting. Uh, do uh, have each coin on its own line and remember uh, the colon after quarter, dime and nickel and so forth because these things do matter in terms of programming and user experience that you follow the directions that is provided. So if you have any questions, feel free to come and talk to me and see me, and we can work them out. Hopefully you're all caught up in everything else, and I'll talk to you soon.